Hello everyone and welcome to Whitetail Driven Solutions YouTube channel. We are bringing you tips, strategies, and tactics to help you and your property be more successful. We not only invite you to subscribe to our channel, but also hit the notification button to be notified when we release new videos. Hey guys, today we're going to touch on promoting and enhancing new bedding areas, new hinge cut areas. Um, and that's where this design that I like to uh, design on a lot of these small parcels comes into play. And a lot of these videos that you see me doing are, uh, you know, it, whether it's uh, in the field in the hinge cutting or in the bidding area um, there, it's already, a lot of times it's already established. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually take some time today to go over the uh, kind of the do's and don'ts and get some things um, on a visual here, maybe on a board, so you can really see how that plays out. And then... Um, we can kind of tweak that a little bit, but what I what I see a lot of uh, first of all We want to talk about is these high hinge cuts. We're gonna be talking about hinge cuts in here So I'm going to kind of hit on that first these high hinge cuts guys are a fad that needs to end and you hear me preach and you hear me talk and talk and talk about this, but I was uh, last night doing some research online and, and doing some stuff and, and of course I'm you know on, on forums or whatever and these videos pop up and it's high hinge cut this high hinge cut that and it's absolutely something that's got to go um, so when referring to hinge cuts make sure you remember to keep those hinge cuts low a hinge cut is a way to promote bedding area to promote bedding and to create a bedding area and it's to promote side cover and it's to enhance the the to meet the daily browse intake uh, requirement that a whitetail has and by hinge cutting it does it's a dangerous um, dangerous dangerous tool to try to do um, it's a dangerous way to cut the tree you create these barber chair effects where the cambium layer um, hangs on to the outside of the tree obviously you don't cut all the way through on a hinge cut that outside layer hangs on when the top of the tree goes down it forces if it, if it hits anything or if it hangs up the momentum of the tree is so heavy now it's it's off the edge of the, the uh, stump and it creates a what they call a barber chair and it can come at you now the last thing you want to do is have that six foot up in the air is coming at your head that's the first and foremost reason is it's absolutely ridiculous to do the second thing is is there's no value to in habitat improvements there's no n place for a high hinge cut people think what they're they're making them hinges high so the deer can go underneath them instead of over the logs and by doing that you're putting the top of the tree, if the top of the tree, and a lot of these guys aren't, you know, aren't doing this where the top of the tree never even hits the ground, it's you know, six foot off the ground as well. But if the top of the tree does get to the ground, that's the only forage, that's the only regrowth, that's the only hardwood regeneration that your or regeneration off that tree is is at all is the top 10, 20 feet. The object is is to get that the whole stem, the whole log on the ground. Or near the ground so that whole tree regenerates especially around the stump where you made the damage where the the cut is and then all that regrowth all them tender um, shoots that are going to grow up off that log there so just to take that first step there we're going to be talking about some hinge cutting here and i just want to that that's got to end um if you if you have anybody that um that kind of goes to battle with you there have them give me a call i'd be more than more than happy to uh, explain the uh, situation and uh, somebody that's in the woods and, and does this for a living and sees it every day. So what we're going to do here, guys, is I've taken this and I've kind of done a drawing here to kind of speed up the video so I didn't have to go through the whole thing. What we're going to do is we're going to design. I'm going to show you how this lays out on like a 20-acre parcel. And um, this outside border, you know, the 20, the 20 is being 600-some feet wide, you know, by that 1,200 uh, feet long they're narrower than they are long so what we did um they're narrower than they are wide i'm sorry and what we did is we started you know on the north and this is a kind of a creating a project that you can see how these um hinge cuts and or these uh, hub style i'm sorry these hub style designs fit in and how they lay out road on the bottom if you're searching for a farm to buy and if you could find one like this this is a great situation 40 80 but this is set up kind of where i'm going to talk about this on a 20 is the road access on the bottom to the south your parking area, you're going to want to, you know, you're use this parking area down here to be your, uh, in that southeastern corner to be um, where you, you know, park the truck. And we're going to talk about bedding areas right now, and at the end of it, I'll tell you a little uh, food plot stuff in here on it too. But what you want to do, guys, is these dotted lines on the side are your access. Your access to your farm has to be, you have to be able to access from the outside in and, and uh, cross access or 
or side access to en enter these stands, and that's how you do this. If there's nothing here, um, you know, you're making a road, let's say, into a food plot, or you're making these four-wheeler trails, make sure they're in the right spots. What I see is, you know, just one of these numbers, there's trails all over in there. They don't have any meaning, and they, they really can screw things up in a hurry. So what you want to do, go to the outside, make these four-wheeler trails or foot trails all the way through so you got access all the way to your north, your north uh, northwest and northeast corner. That's the first step. Second step, as you can see, these this uh, this power this um, the the line here, the solid line that I have inside of that dotted line, um, you know, would be you walking in. Hopefully, you know, you've got some. If it's open, if it's an open um, field, then obviously you're going to have to put some screening and stuff. But I'm I'm using this on like a, a timbered twenty. Um, so come out of the parking spot there. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this maybe like on an evening hunt, let's say. So you can get, really get the feel for it. You come in off this parking spot. You stay on the east side of the farm. You, this is a uh, foot trail. Come in and you're accessing, you can see you're accessing this stand location from the east. You come in here. This is a perfect spot. What we always do is we always say don't hang these. Um, we don't, you know, we don't hang these uh, licking branches in an area that you can't hunt. And by doing this, you're not creating this, this access here and creating this flow of deer um, from the north and you know what I should have started with too is we're, we're looking at this as a as your agricultural or your destination feed locations are to the south maybe to the southeast southwest they're out the bottom of the farm here and you're accessing from your road in here so what this does is you're not cutting the line of travel you're coming in from the side so this is to show you how that all plays out so this one here you got the stand and then your licking branch or your water, you know, like I said, you could put a water hole here or whatever too. Um, and then your that's a camera location, obviously, uh, you know, you hang the camera there. This is that corridor that we speak of, and I've had some questions on this corridor from your licking branch to the hub. You know, you, you see me use this hub style as my, my hand sometimes on designing these. Um, this corridor in here, guys, has no, you can see this has no hinge cutting. Any trees... That are in this direct line from your licking branch to your hub is no there's no um there's no hinge cutting you create hinge cutting to promote bedding area keep that in mind and you do not want any of this hinge cutting off from that corridor the other corridors that's a different story once you get in the hub this corridor you want this to be as thick and through here as you can so what you do is you take a paint can and you go through here and you make a direct line um, 175 to 100 yards on these small parcels is what it ends up being from here to your to the top of your hub so 75 or 100 yards between your licking branch and your hub then that area after you paint it you go right down through the center of it you open it up about four or five feet wide and you make sure that that you create edge any of the trees in there that you have to take out um, if there's big stuff in there go around it but you know try to get a, a, a straight as line as possible and take those uh, to take those undesirable trees out of your your path there, and cut them up into firewood. Put the tops, you know, make it nice. Don't create a tunnel or a wall effect of brush here because then you're going to do you're going to force deer to the outside of it. And that's not what you want to do. You're creating a a, a travel corridor um, between your hub and your licking branch. So as you can see, deer movement is here. You're off to the side. So keep that in mind. That's why we're doing this, not not this. So your deer aren't, when you're in a tree stand, your deer aren't coming out of a bedding area over the top of the hill looking right at your stand, going down underneath you and going past you. And, and then that you got to take into consideration your, your uh, scent um, funnels or your scent cones. This is why you want to be off to the side. With that topic since we're on that, you're in the stand. It's a, it's a northwest or a west wind. Your, your scent cone is, is going this way out or your scent cone is going this way blowing it down if you were here if your stand was here your scent cone is here and the deer are going past you eventually when those deer go past you if they hang up in an area or a staging area or whatever that is before they go across the road you're going to have a chance to get winded that's why set side access is so powerful so getting back to the drawing here this corridor so that's you you cut it you flush cut those uh, those stumps right to the ground Open all this up, make little brush piles along the side or out 10, 15 yards from that corridor, whatever you got to do. Make sure that this, and I'll show you some pictures, 
if this is really thick on both sides, then you, that's where a mulching head or something like that comes in where you can go right down through the center of it and open that up, grind it right down. Then you get into the hub. Inside of this hub, I'll put 20 and 30 feet. What that is, that's a 20 or 30 foot diameter on these small, small ones I make. Now, um, this first initial bedding area is built off an acre diagram. So it's 208 feet by 208 feet. And then the arch is in between it. So what you'll see is you get into this, and if there's any into this into this uh, hub uh, design here, guys, if there's any um, little pine trees or cedars that they've been rubbing on, or if there's some honeysuckle, or sometimes I see um, uh, Russian olive or, or autumn olive or something in there that they're rubbing on already, leave those in there, but open this up around it. Leave um, some of it, not all of it, but open it up and, and you know, uh, brush all that out or or go in there and clear cut it with your saws or whatever, a 20 or 30 foot circle. In there, this is where you start these hub designs that you hear me speak of, of your hand. This, that hub is your hand, your fingers are the corridors. So you come in here with a saw and you paint these, first of all you paint the, take the paint can and you go out and you make four of these um, corridors. So you go out about 75 or 80 feet, sometimes they're 100 feet, but you go out from this, this uh, hub and you go right down the center and you, and you do the same thing that you did here. You make a corridor that's four or five feet wide, just as clean trim as you can get it. And then you go up and around this hub and you continue to make those up. You continue to make those corridors. These, this creates these corridors. Now, then you've got your hinge cutting to do. You come in here with your hinge cutting and all of these trees, what you can see is I, I've written this out or, or drawn this out already. It, these, this is the base of the tree, so these are your stumps, okay? And you hinge cut, you directional hinge cut. So when you hear me, you know, say directional hinge cut, you directional hinge cut these to the outside of your corridor. Don't cross them, you're not creating a canopy over top of the corridor, you want your trees to the outside. You wanna be able to walk down your corridor and you wanna tip the trees to the outside. If you can do it so the tree is, um, and I'll show you here, so the, on each side of it, so if you go down through this tree goes the outside, this tree goes the inside. This tree's out, that side, this one in. And the outsides are just going to have the tops. So the squiggly marks here, guys, are the, are the top of the tree, you know, representing the, the brush or the limbs of the tree. So you go, to the, you go into the next one. You make these, tip them out of the outside. You go to the center, these get tipped to the inside. This corridor gets tipped to the inside. What you're doing is you're putting the tops together or laying them, if, you're, if the tops don't meet together there's you can stagger them just a little bit but they um if, if they do hit that's fine but you don't want three or four of them on it you want two not three or four you want just the one from one side one from the other tipped in so what you're you'll see is this gets tipped in that gets tipped in this gets tipped in this gets tipped in if you aren't touching these in the end that's okay depending on how big you make this you know if your if your tops aren't touching that's okay because that's just another way around the end of them that's fine um but that just proves that these areas can't be just canopy trees the tornado effect is what i like to call it that some guys do and it's it's uh um i, I we get just enough uh pieces that i could probably go in and just fix tornado tornado area bedding areas than i do creating bedding areas so don't get into that so here what you're going to see is you're going to create these corridors so now you've got four legs five legs on this one and all your tops are together but you'll see in the centers here you've created a um, kind of a passageway in between but what I like to do is these will be open, but what I like to do is I like to go in and really promote that archway. So not only do you have the corridor here, corridor there, all the way out, you have a corridor in the center that's open all the way around through an arch. So what that does, guys, is it cre creates, instead of just having one, two, three, four areas in there that are all hinge cut, you actually you, you take this arch right here and you break that apart so now what you've created, you've created what I like to call these bedrooms, if you will, or uh, these cubicles or these bedrooms inside of the bedding area. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I mean, depending on how elaborate you make it, th that corridor divides them. So it's like walking down the hallway in your house and having a room off each side if you, if you need to be you know, in a, uh, to go in there to get away from people, or if it's, uh, you know, you want to go in and lock the door sometimes to get away from folks, that's kind of the theory. It's a hallway, and your your uh, bedrooms and your um, cubicles, maybe is what I should call them, they're off to the side. 
So you have, you know, usually it works out to you have about eight of those in one bedding area. It's very, very powerful. But like you can see, as you can see, a lot of guys will do is they'll come in and they'll tip these trees. You know, you got your, you've got your corridor off the hub. You've got your corridor that comes up. They'll just tip the trees across them. Well, that, what that does is that's fine to does and uh, young immature deer, but when they need to exit that area and they need to exit that area in a hurry, they, um, it gets real chaotic and they don't, they'll start to bed to the outside of this whole diagram if it's too thick. You'll f start finding beds on the outside. The problem with it is then you're going to get deer bedding down in here too close to your stand locations and that's, uh, that's where you start bumping deer. Um, so you can see how this ties together and then what I, so this is a, this is a doe bedding area crop down to the south. This is the initial first doe bedding area, bedding area. Your deer numbers are lower, your buck and your, your bucks will bed on the outside of this if your deer numbers aren't extremely high. But this is, this is made for, to get all your deer dander, all your pellet count, everything is in here. And then where do you tie in the buck bedding area situation to that? What I like to do is I like to go right into the center of this, right here and extend this corridor. So this corridor, if you draw a line, starts at your licking branch, goes all the way up through into your hub, right out the top of it, all the way through another, so you're, you're, uh, you know, you're 100 yards to here, you're another, it's probably 200 or 300 yards from your stand location, and you create another hub. Now this one up here, you make them smaller, because it's a buck bedding area, you want them more personal, so, or uh, on a personal level for them, so there's not too many, not too much drama in there. So what you do is you come up here and you create another 20 or 30 foot, um, hub and then you create these corridors coming off from it but then you can see in here is I don't do near the hinge cutting that you do in a doe bedding area and the reason is you want it more open they want the cover they want the side cover they want the food but they want to be able to see what's going on and smell things um, that they need to if they need to uh, predator detection or uh, does in the area if they are bedded down and does start moving they want to have that uh, in their in their control not the other way around where that's a surprise visit when something comes you know, barreling in coyotes or whatever the fact is, or humans. So this is how I connect the two of them together. The neat thing of this is, is what you can do, depending on the size of the property, what you can do is then you start, then you start enhancing these other areas. You take this corridor out and you create another hub and you create your corridors. Now you got another buck bedding area. You got a buck bedding area to the northwest. You take this corridor out, corridor out you make another hub you make corridors off from that. Now you have one, two, three buck bedding areas that are all off from this this center. Now keep in mind we're dealing with a you know a 20 that's like 660 wide here, and so you you gotta you can't have you know two or three of those doe bedding areas in there. If you want to break them apart and do smaller ones, that's fine. This all is contingent on your contour. If you have contour that breaks these things up, that's great. You can do more than uh, just one layout. But if you treat this as a 10 or a 20 acres, this is, this is a lot of the designs that you know, people are overlooking that's, that you can do, and they're very, very powerful. So side access, tree stand, licking branch, you can see the deer flow, bucks come out of here. What you're gonna find is, guys, this stand location, this stand location is going to turn, um, by doing this, so now you have buck and, bed, buck and doe bedding areas. Now you're able to come up further up your east fence line here and in, in and this is another very, very powerful uh, tree stand location because your bucks are going to, your, your bucks are going to come out and either go around the outside of the bedding area or come through the center of your travel corridor in, internal of it, knowing that they can scent check everything from the center of this out. They can walk right through the center of it and scent check both, depending on the wind direction, both sides of that bedding area. And they don't have to go down, up and down each one of the corridors powerful or what they'll do is they'll come here and they'll break apart and come around the bedding areas here what that does is that's fine because then you you've got your stands here and if there's contour in anything here to kind of pinch them down to create this funnel but they'll they will move around it the reason is is because of the their scent checking it but created correctly in that time of that go time of the year when that rut kicks in that last week of october first week of november You'll see a lot of these deer moving through the center of it here because they're checking that that's where the most of that deer dander, that doe estrus and all that stuff is in there. Uh, hair count and all that stuff, deer dander, pellets, all that. So you can kind of see how that lays out. I hope that makes more sense now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll bring the, 
bring the uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about before I do that. But if this is a flat area, guys, let's say as I have this, um, I use the screening tool a little bit that you'll see. Um, this here, if this is a flat area, obviously, like we said, you could plant uh, a screen in here, you know, native grass, uh, cave in rock, get that six, eight feet tall that you could break this apart so you can slip into your tree stand here. The stand location is right off the end of it. That's a good idea for a screen so you can slip in behind it. You can come up here. Obviously, you can create another another wall here that goes right out to your trail so you can slip in right behind it, get in and out of that tree stand undetected. Another thing I like about doing this, guys, another wall that I like to create is if you can find these and they're, they're out there. Um, not every property is, is able to do this, but some of the properties I see, you can lay these out even if you have to, you know, if your ag is, is not directly to the south, guys, you just pivot this to wherever your, wherever your, uh, your crop, crop ground, ground is here to the south. You just keep pivoting this to fit that diagram so it's a direct line to uh, food. So they're not coming here and then turning on to you know directly going west or turning and going directly going east kind of thing. It's a it's a becomes a flow from your buck bedding, your doe bedding areas through your corridors, past your stands, on the way out to these destination feed locations. So that kind of gives you an idea on what you're what you're looking at and what you're able to do. Um, one thing that I did when well, we talked about the screening there is if there's not a ridge, if if you can do this, so there's a ridge system between your stand, your licking branches, and your hub, sometimes you can get, you know, put them in an area where there's, there's a ridge here. You know, that ridge might be only 10 or 12 feet or whatever it is. But if there's a ridge here running this way, you know, running northeast, northwest, running right straight east and west, whatever that is, but you can put your stand here. You can get in and out of here, even with the more aid of some screen, get out of there and leave this bedding over the top of that crown of that hill down in the bottom. Or, or on the next ridge that you know that uh, separates you, whatever that case is. If it's flat though, what you do is you come in here and you create this long, 208 feet wide, 208 foot long, uh, 10 or 20 foot wide rectangular shape all the way across here. You clear cut that area. All the trees out of there, you don't have to take the stumps out or anything like that, but uh, it's, it's best if you can, but if, if you don't, you can come in here and open that up. So you're going to have a, a path through there running east and west that has a all the, all the sunlight in the world now to that 20-foot opening, 208-foot long. You're going to have this whole opening down through here. And what you do is you come in here, and this is where you plant your, your switch. Your switch grass all gets planted through here. Now, obviously, you want to leave this. I'll show you. You can leave this in the center. But this all gets planted to switch grass along this. So what you're doing is you're creating a barrier between your bedding area and your stand placements that you can get in and out. You can even do that up up here if you wanted to screen that off so you can you know make sure not only here your your walking access but your your vis visual block there on your buck bed area. But this down here, this is where you come in and you plant these. You can also do um, for a long term fix, which I'd recommend, is you come in here and you plant these spruce trees in a staggered effect so you you come in and plant the row and then you come in behind and you, you fill the you fill the hole with your with your uh, with your uh, spruce trees in here and that's a long-term um, fix so once these come up you know that 10 years down the road them are going to be a, a block then you're really going to have because then you've got layers you've got a layer of, of spruce you've got a layer of uh, switchgrass and then you go into your your corridor and now you've got your layers of your density of your um, your correct density of your bedding area behind it. So in in the center here, what you want to do is you want to make sure when you you connect these together, your switchgrass ends right here on your corridors, guys. So this corridor continues all the way up through. Don't plant across it. So your grass runs right up through it, and that acts as a visual right to your uh, creates an edge and a visual right to your looking branch, and then your stands off to the side of it. But as you can see, now now looking at this, your deer are going to come out of here. They're going to filter in from the top. Your bucks are going to come in. They're going to go either around the outsides or through your, your doe bedding areas. And this is all behind a wall or in an area where this is not, you can't see this going on in a bow hunting situation. And they're come down through. But when these deer are coming down through, they're, they're faced to the south. They're walking down through here. You're hunting on a north wind, northeast, or northwest, northeast wind situation 
and all these deer are going past and they've got their heads looking completely past you, not at you. They're coming out of the bedding areas, they're going past you, and your side access, all these deer funnel past and it's there's no there's no looking up in the tree and busting you. Um, now, will they look off to the side? Yes, they will. But if they're using a licking branch, they're not directly looking you right in the face, stuff like that. That's the power of the side access. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna show you, um, zoom it up here a little bit closer for you so you can see how this actually all designs now and it, it'll make uh, a little more, more sense. So this is the screen that we're talking. Leave this open. Stand, licking branch, water hole, corridor that's trimmed out like I said not hinge cut there's no hinge cutting in between here your hinge cutting starts off from your your uh, corridors off your hub and then like I said if you want to you know you take and if you have the room which you need the buck bedding area it might only be one on small parcels but if you can you know make it elaborate and you can go up and you can make these other ones you maybe can get two or three buck bedding areas this right here though guys your this is creates doe beds doe beds doe beds all along the back side of the screening you're going to have doe bedding all the way through here in, in eight different uh, bedrooms or um, these pockets in here that you create. Then the corridor leaves and goes right straight to the right straight uh, north and ties in. This corridor is where you can tip trees to the outside along that to make uh, to enhance your um, your uh, more bedding area. You know, place some more does around on the outside of this corridor or some bucks that aren't in. Um, you know, give your bucks some more d diversion um, along this corridor so they're not all jammed into one location. It's okay to do it here. You don't want to do it here because then you're promoting these deer to bed too close to where you're at. So it's okay to do these, um, to hinge cut to the outside directional hinge cut on a corridor that you're linking between your bedding area, your doe bedding area, and your buck bedding area, but not on your initial corridor between your licking branch and your first hub. So I hope that makes sense there. And then like I said, these are the spruce trees, and you want to really make sure that you do it in these design. You plant one, two, and then you come back in on a triangle, and you put that one in the, in the center, because then when these mature, they grow in towards each other, and this third one comes up behind it as a blocker. And you do that all the way across there. Like I said, this is a long goal, long-term goal effect. This is a immediate um, screen or wall. But if you are in a situation where this is a ridge, this is a ridge system here, and this is all over the ridge, and you're on one side of the ridge, or just over the top of the ridge, and they're down below. You don't have to create this. Uh, how does a food plot tie into this? What I would do is this would be my food plot area, would be down in here, um, would be down in this location here, surrounded by switch as well. And that's a different, you know, that's a different um, video. But if you put your switch down in here, and you made the, the, the uh, kept the food to the center, something like that, where this was a secure area. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to come in and you make these you make these corridors connect to your food locations like this. And by doing that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna clear cut this area out. This is gonna be completely clear cut, not, not hinge cut, but clear cut. So this all grows up with serious amounts of stem count in here. And what that does is now you can see this is on small parcels so you can see um, switch hands here but you can see buck bed buck bedding thick dense secluded comes down in hits the connects to the doe bedding areas if not goes around it comes through the doe bedding areas this is a wall this is thick as well and if you wanted to tie the food plots into this um, I, you know this is where these uh, food plots come in knowing that they're ag you know it's not going to be a big big food plot on these uh on these um small parcels but you surround it with the switch make that edge real soft excavate this all out so you can get some good sunlight to it you don't have to you know your stumps and everything in there but this area in between it this is a travel corridor that has to be created if you if you implement when you start implementing food plots into it is because you want this thick and what this does it creates an edge now creates an edge now so that's a bow hunting setup what's good about this setup guys is on a rifle stand setup you don't have to come in this far your stand here is now going to be out here on this setup so your your rifle blinds can be here 
or they can be here. And the reason is, is you, you're two, three hundred yards from two hundred yards from here. You're two hundred yards maybe from your from your licking branch, 150, 200 yards, and then you're, you know, you're, but now you're two, three hundred, four hundred yards away from your food plots. And once this happens, once you create these deer, they are able to go from their, their bedding, buck bedding, through doe bedding, screened, secluded, and you can see nobody's, nobody's uh, walking across this. Nobody's putting boot tracks across it where they're going to pick you off and smell you. Nobody's walking through it, bumping anything out. The wind is right. This is all designed. And like I said, this is an after, you know, after if you wanted to do the food plot, then this ties in. But the topic of this today was I wanted you to see how these um, these corridors or this hub design really lays out. Now, what I'm going to talk about real quick here in ending is once you create these and you get these all open, leaf blower, you take a leaf blower and you go right down through these corridors here, all the way around all this open area, all these corridors get, uh, you know, the more you do, the more you're obviously going to want one or two backpacks, uh, backpack blowers going. Take the leaf blowers and you get all the debris out of these areas. Push it all out back into their bedding area. What that is doing, guys, is you're promoting, you're getting good sun-to-soil contact that way. See, you always hear seed-to-soil, but this is sun-to-soil, and this is going to regenerate like crazy in here. What I like to do is when I'm, um, when I'm making these corridors, when it's, this is a new design on a new property that hasn't been touched, and this is a new improvement, what I'll do is in a field, in a rye setting, you make, uh, it's 80 to uh, 90, some, you know, some situations up to like 100, 120 pounds per acre of rye. What I do, annual rye, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring like 30 or 40 pounds per acre in here and just go up and down these areas and plant these to rye very lightly. And, you know, I'm going to catch some slack for that. And I always do about putting feed internal of a bedding area, but, you know, hear me out on that is because it's rye it's not brassicas it's not clovers it's not chicory it's not any of the stuff that you see everybody else putting in it it's rye and the reason is it's rye is because it's a uh, attractant but it's not a hold um, throughout the season so once you create these this is going to get green what this is going to do it's going to promote these does that are in here during their um, first and second feeding of the day before you know your your third feeding is your huntable feeding so your fourth and fifth feedings are out in your destination uh, feed locations down here or they're in your food plot these are your first and second feedings of the day well during the rut if these deer lay in here that's where the, your lockdown um, comes in as these bucks will bed closer to this if they're in here and those does don't get up and move um, that doesn't help you out as far as these uh, long sits that you'll do during the uh, you know the end of October into or November. So what I do, guys, is I plant these areas because it promotes food inside these bedding areas, a new bedding area. So it gets the it gets the attractant kicked right off, so you can hold these does in here, and you can hold. I'd even do it in the buck bedding areas too. The second year I don't do it because then you have the natural forage, your natural growth of your your uh, tonnage of your weeds and and uh you know uh, herbaceous growth and all all of your uh woody brush stems and all this stuff is now kicked in all your uh shrubs and all your stems and everything coming from your hinge cutting that's that's all kicks in and you don't need it and then so th that's what i do there leaf blower come in and that's where the you know the the screening you plant your screen and then i go through and lightly lightly seed this that's what i do on the first year but like I said, the second year, I don't, I don't recommend doing that. And err on the side of caution there, guys. A little bit of feed in here goes a long ways. You don't want to overplant these areas, if at all. Um, but I do that on new ones to create and promote. That's the topic of this deal is promoting these new uh, bedding areas and how that we create them. So that's how it all ties together. And uh, you can see the different stand locations. Now, by doing these up here, putting these other buck bedding areas up top, what you can create is you just come up further along here. This this walkway should be over here on the edge a little bit farther. You come in and you now you've got two uh, tree stand locations that you've created on the outside of your your buck bedding because this is the travel now that you're going to create. You're going to create this movement with your uh, with your buck bedding areas. They're going to do that. Your buck travel is going to do that because now they're if there's a, a buck that's holding down the fort in here. And you've got another mature buck he's going to work the outside area 
and if he's if he's not on a doe you're gonna have these bucks filtering down through checking all these areas and that's how it ties now into this travel corridor and this stand location if you can get in this is another stand location right there but you'd have to access it from you know being being careful here on your food your food situation but you'd have to access it up through here and in into your stand location here of course if this is the game that you got to access it from the side over here um, I'm trying not to be you know moving too much because I got the camera off the tripod here but this is a situation where you're gonna have to plant screening along this all the way along this edge right here to get um, to get this hidden travel behind it so you can get all the way up into the timber uh, so you don't get busted you know on this uh, on your food plot here so that's how it all ties in guys I hope that makes sense um, I wanted to put that onto a, a board and talk a little bit about how that uh, hub style is created and that's I um, have a lot of you know talk about hey when you said these corridors you initially start uh, you, your hinge cutting and remember um, your uh, hinge cutting is not for shooting lanes your hinge cutting is for bedding only if you knock trees down your hinge cutting trees down you are promoting um, promoting bedding make sure that's not done too close to the uh, to these bedding areas so that's how uh, simple uh, design an easy design just creating one without you know it's not an aerial or you know taking any of the topography into the area or looking at these drainages or like I said you know the using the topo maps to really um, know how the land lays out that's just designing one from a above on a blank slate I mean you could initially do this on a on a, a hayfield if you wanted and take a lot more uh, native grasses but that's that's the power of these hub designs and how they fit together and how you do the uh, you know the, the leaf blowers how that ties into it um, planting the uh, screen lightly planting the rye in there um, to enhance that to, to initial promote that bedding to get those deer in there especially if it like I said if there's, it's on a farm that has has not had any habitat improvements on it for years you want to draw the attention to it you want to get things happening in there quick and that's that's where that comes in the second year you pull the rye out you don't plant the rye and it's just your uh, you know your all your herbaceous growth and all that stuff that has kicked in and all your stem count should be right by then so that's uh, that's the idea guys I hope that uh, helps kind of answer some questions we've got a good uh, question and answer segment here coming to you um, shortly maybe yet this weekend too so if you got any questions about this guys feel free to uh, to give me a shout thanks